Welcome to my first episode of Diaries of Cheshire Wildlife Watcher, and I'd like to say a big thank you to everyone watching. In this episode, I will be sharing some of my special encounters, footage and photographs from my most recent trip to my favourite place on the North Wales coast. I spend most of my weeks off at a cottage by the sea, at the Victorian seaside town of Clandidno. I love the area of North Wales so much, and one day, I hope to call this place my home. Over the past few years, I have seen and filmed so many different creatures on the North Wales coast, from seals that give birth and molt on the many inaccessible bays around the Orm. I have also seen porpoises and bottlenose dolphins just off the coast here, as well as marine mammals. I have also found lots of mammals on land, and two of my favourites, the fox and the badgers, may seem very normal in the inner cities or in the rural gardens, but to find them here, by the sea, feeding on the beaches, was a very unique find. Further up the coast, a few miles from Clandidno, we also filmed stoats at RSPB Conway, which is a lovely little reserve on an estuary, and as you can see, they were very energetic. I have also seen and filmed plenty of bird life here, from seabirds to waders and the odd special migrating bird passing through, like the osprey. There are also plenty of butterflies and a few reptiles, such as the slow worm and the sand lizard. A great place to see lots of amazing birds and mammals and lizards and insects. But most of all, I love the scenery and the views from the orms are stunning. And with all these things combined, I think you can understand why I spend my weeks off on the stunning North Wales coast. Lots of the upcoming videos on the Diaries of a Cheshire Wildlife Watcher channel will be featuring photographs and footage I filmed right here on the North Wales coast, plus on my local patch in the beautiful countryside of Cheshire. But I'll tell you more about that in the next episode of Diaries of a Cheshire Wildlife Watcher. While having my weeks off at Clanded now, I do lots of exciting things that I can't do on my local patch, from sea kayaking, snorkelling, cliff walking, climbing, and lots of walking. Plus, I do my favourite things, which is wildlife filming and photography. I'll go into the above in more detail in future episodes of Diaries of a Cheshire Wildlife Watcher. But in this episode, I'll begin with an encounter with one of my favourite birds. And every time I visit Wales, I always try to visit the stunning, fresh-flowing rivers where the dippers can be found. As I haven't seen one on my trips this year, I decided to make some extra effort and head to a reliable spot on a river near Disseth Waterfall. Last year I got some great encounters with a pair that nested here, and here's some footage I got last summer. On this year's visit, I only got a couple of shots of the dippers, which I was happy with, and they had an autumnal feel. As it was very warm and spring-like, the dippers were very territorial, and we saw a few of them fighting and chasing individuals away. And as it's nearly autumn, it was quite an unusual sight to see. Earlier that day, before visiting the dippers, we ended up finding the body of a cetacean, washed up on a beach, not far from Clandidno but on the beach at Rill. While staying by the sea, we walked lots of miles of coastline, as I enjoy the fresh air and open space. Plus sometimes you may see or find something unexpected. And one day we found something special on a North Wales beach, close to the prom. We found a dead porpoise which had been washed up against the sea wall. It was a sad but interesting find. The porpoise looked like it had been there and dead for a while. It had many injuries on its body and had started to decompose. I could not see the other side to see what injuries were there as it was very heavy and I couldn't move it. After taking a few photos and filming the porpoise to show its size and injuries so I could send these to Sea Watch as they collect reports and sightings from volunteers around the country and even the world. And you can find out more information on the Sea Watch website and I'll post a link below, and they'll tell you how you can report your sightings to them. Sea Watch then uses this information from the sightings and reports to find out the best places to do marine conservation, and to find out the best places 
where we can watch these beautiful creatures in their own environment without causing them any disturbance or stress. I'll post a quick link to the Sea Watch website where you can report your sightings and find out more information about what Sea Watch does. I apologise for the gory photographs, but that's nature for you, wild and gruesome, in this instance. I also got the chance to touch the porpoise, as I had a few pairs of disposable gloves, so not to get any bacteria on my hands. The porpoise felt smooth and soft. I expected it to be a bit slimy and more solid, but I was quite surprised that it was totally opposite of what I thought it would be. The porpoise may have been dead, but to me it was a once in a lifetime opportunity to get a proper look and feel of such a magnificent creature close up. And most people have no clue that these swim so close to our shores, even off some of our most popular beaches in the United Kingdom. After a while I started to smell the porpoise, and it was not very pleasant, so I decided it was time to head off and see what else we could find. On the same day as we found the dead porpoise, we also had an unexpected and amazing encounter. On the way back to the cottage, we walked along a promenade on one side the sea and on the other side some sand dunes. And while walking by, I looked close into the bushes and I could see red tail feathers. At first I thought it was a wood pigeon, but after a quick look closer, I knew this was no pigeon, but I think it was an African grey parrot. It must have escaped locally. So I whistled and said hello, and it replied, so I went closer to see if it was injured, and if it had any identification on its feet. I thought about how long it must have been away from its owners, and as it had not much fresh water around, or food, I thought it may need some nourishment. Luckily, in my bag, I had some leftovers from my dinner, some crispy crackers, and fruit juice. I held it in front of the bird, and it carefully grabbed the crisp from my hand in its beak and held it by its foot and began to eat. After eating a few of these, I thought it may need a drink, so I went looking in the dunes for something shallow to hold liquid for the bird to drink from. I ended up using a plastic cup which had been thrown away in the dunes, so I cut it down to a shallow tray, which the bird then happily drank from. Then the bird flew to the top of the dunes, followed by gulls, and then the parrot quickly flew back to me and landed on my head. And it didn't half squawk, but after looking at its chest after it landed on the branch next to me, it was either molting or the local birds had been attacking the parrot. And that's when I knew we needed to find the owner. As I could not catch the bird, and there was not much light left, we kept it company to keep away aerial predators, and kept it fed. I took a few photos before it got dark and filmed. Then I could use this footage and photographs on Twitter, to say we had found a parrot. And as we spoke to a few locals, one gentleman suggested he put it on the local Facebook page. We stayed with the parrot until it got dark, so we knew to have the best chance to survive another night until we could find the owner. So hopefully, with this being the end of the day, tomorrow we would find the bird's owner. The next day we found out it was called Molly, and it had made it back to its owner, safe and sound. A nice end to the tale of the parrot and the porpoise. Even if I ended up with a smashed iPhone when I slipped on my bum after leaving the porpoise. But these things happen and what a great day we had with many different encounters. On one of my more adventurous outings, while by the sea, involved using a brand new product called the Easy Breathe which is basically a snorkelling mask that allows you to breathe normally like you would on land. The Easy Breathe cost about £40 from an online store and they're that popular they sold out within 24 hours of being released. I've posted a link to the shop where I bought the Easy Breathe mask and you can find out more information there too. On an earlier trip I found the perfect place where we could test the Easy Breathe and as the weather was sunny and very warm we had the perfect day, so we packed up our gear early and headed off to the special spot, which was perfect for exploring under the waves and the surface of the sea. We found a place close to the west shore of Glandidna, which was perfect. The area was quiet, but involved some climbing down a sandy and rocky thin path, which was very nerve-wracking, as at some point, having heavy kit on our backs made it very difficult to navigate down to the beach. The area was rocky, but sheltered from any big waves, 
And the main thing I wanted was clear water and a graduation in depth from shallow to deep to allow for seeing how far we could see to the bottom of the seabed. So I got my wetsuit, flippers and mask on and was ready to get in the water. Unfortunately, I only had my broken iPhone and no filming camera on me. So I have no footage for this part of the video, but I'll play some time-lapse footage while I explain what I saw under the water. It was freezing at first, but after a minute I warmed up. And a metre under the surface there was so much life, from crabs, blennies and other tiny fish of different sizes and colours, all a metre away from the rocky beach. It was so healthy and beautiful, but most of all peaceful under the water, and it seemed like I had no worries while swimming around in this beautiful environment. I got a few scratches on my hands and my belly, and it even cut through my wetsuit, but they were only minor cuts, so I knew I'd be fine. As I have only tested the Easy Breathe mask in my local river, it was nice to finally use in the salty and refreshing waters off the North Wales coast at Clandidna. After leaving the water to get dry on some nearby rocks that gave a great view of the open sea towards Puffin Island on Anglesey and the Conway Estuary. We watched the sea for any signs of cetaceans, but no sightings of them, as the tide was coming in and the sea started to get too rough. We saw a few gannets that soared by, but amazingly, a few minutes later, a grey seal swam from around the corner, where all the seabirds nest on their cliff ledges. The seal must have heard me in the water splashing, so it came over to see who was in the area. The seal swam around for a while, bobbing up and down and seeing who was actually sitting on the rocks right next to where he was swimming. Eventually, the seal left the area. But I just wished that I'd been in the water still. So I could see the seal under the sea. As it's been a dream of mine for a long time to swim with seals on the North Wales coast. I could easily swim with seals elsewhere. But what would make it really special is swimming with the seals right here on the North Wales coast at Clandidna. Next year I'll be back to this spot with more cameras to film on the surface as well as under the surface. As there's so much going on and encounters to be had right on my doorstep on the North Wales coast. So that's all for this episode of Diaries of a Cheshire Wildlife Watcher and I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I'll be back with another episode next time. Every month I will be releasing a 15 minute episode of Diaries of a Cheshire Wildlife Watcher. And in the next episode I'll be showing you my local patch and some of my favourite creatures that live right on my doorstep. I will be doing a shorter weekly episode called Diaries of a Cheshire Wildlife Watcher Notes. These will be about 5 minutes long and they will contain updates about current projects, daily sightings plus footage, photographs and maybe a few product reviews. Thanks again for watching and please like the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel.